everybody. Did you ever heard the term black holes? Did that name ever fool you or confuse you? Black holes. Are there really black holes in the space? It is really mysterious, right? So today I'm here to speak about black holes. What are black holes? Coming to the definition of a black hole, black hole is a region on space-time where gravity is so strong that nothing, including the light or any other electromagnetic wave, cannot escape it. Does the definition seem so complex? No, it is simple that we all know that black hole is seen on the space. So, black hole is the area on the space where the gravitational field is too powerful, even the light, which is the speedest thing in the whole universe, cannot escape it when it has entered to it. Now let us see how a black hole is formed or the formation of black holes. Black holes are formed by the death of massive stars. Does all the stars become black hole at the end of their life? No. Stars are mainly classified into two categories, low mass star and high mass star. Our sun is a low mass star. So first of all, like, let's take the case of a low mass star. In the life cycle of a low mass star, it will burn up the fuel, which is hydrogen. And here comes the question, how does the stars and our sun gives us energy? It is because of the temperature in it. Because of the temperature, the process named as nuclear fusion occurs, in which hydrogen becomes helium. And because of this, a lot and lot of energy is produced. This is the energy that we receive from all the stars and our sun. As I said, first of all, the low mass star will burn up their fuel. And as time goes on, their fuel will become a little or the remaining hydrogen will become a little. At this stage, the star will start to burn the fuel in more fast way. Because of this fastness, the uh, star will become bigger and bigger and becomes more reddish. This stage is called a red giant stage. After becoming a red giant, the star will blow away the outer coverings helium and the remaining hydrogen through a small explosion. After this explosion, the center part or the core of the star only remains. This is called a white dwarf. Now let us see the case of a high mass star or a massive star. As I said, in massive star also, they will burn up their thermonuclear fuel which is the hydrogen. And when hydrogen becomes exhausted, there will be helium. The stars will convert helium into beryllium at this stage. And then beryllium becomes silicon, carbon or oxygen. The process will continue until it reaches iron. And no star has the temperature, the capability and the energy to make iron into other elements. And because of this, the nuclear fusion stops suddenly and the star will collapse gravitationally inward. It is because the balance between the gravity and the energy produced from the nuclear fusion is dismantled. And when it collapses gravitationally, something named as shock wave is produced from its center. And because of the effect of the shock wave, the outer portion of the star is blasted the helia the iron and all the other elements will be blasted and this blast blast or this explosion is called supernova after supernova the remaining part will become either a neutron star or a black hole how can we determine will it became a black hole or a neutron star here it comes the importance of Schwarzschild radius. What is Schwarzschild radius? You know, you can make anything into a black hole. If you compress the thing into inverse it and makes it smaller than its Schwarzschild radius. 
Let's take our earth as an example. Our earth weighs 6 into 10 raised to 24 kilograms. And if you want to make earth a black hole, yes, you will have to compress the earth from all the sides and make it smaller or equal to a peanut. Then the earth will become a black hole. So we can say that the Schwarzschild radius is directly dependent on the mass of the object. And everything can be made smaller than its Schwarzschild radius and made a black hole if we compress it inwards. And now let's take our sun as an example. If you want, if you want to make sun a black hole, you will have to compress it and make smaller than a 3 kilometer wide sphere. Then the sun will also become a black hole. As I said, after the supernova, if the massive star becomes smaller or equal to its Schwarzschild radius, it will become a black hole. Otherwise, when it becomes bigger than its Schwarzschild radius, it will become a neutron star. Now we know how the black hole is formed. And next, we are moving to the parts of a black hole. Coming to the parts of a black hole, black hole has mainly four parts. They are accretion disk, photon sphere, event horizon, and singularity. First of all, let's discuss what is this accretion disk. Before knowing what is accretion disk, what is this accretion? Accumulation of particles by a massy object because of its gravitational attraction is called accretion. And you know, uh, the black hole has a powerful gravitational field and the black hole will attract the object that comes near the black hole. And when it starts that at, at, uh, attraction, first of all we will reach the accretion disk or we can say that the outermost layer of a black hole is accretion disk. And you know why we call it as an accretion disk? Because first of all we will orbit around the black hole before entering it. And because of this, something like a disk format is formed. That's why this area is called accretion disk. After accretion disk, the second part is photon sphere. Photon sphere is a place where gravity is so strong that even the photons, which are the particles of light and the particles of energy, are forced to orbit around the black hole, which means uh, uh, the photon sphere has more gravity than the accretion disk. And because of this gravity, the photons are forced to orbit around it. And you know, in these two parts, we have a chance or an opportunity uh, to escape before getting into the black hole. The third part is event horizon. We can mention event horizon as the boundary of the black hole. If something crosses the event horizon or, uh, or get into the event horizon, then it cannot come back. It is trapped on the black hole forever. The distance from the singularity, which is the centermost point of the black hole, to the event horizon is the real Schwarzschild radius that we discussed just before. Which means when it is on the stage of a massive star, its Schwarzschild radius is the distance between the singularity to the event horizon when it becomes a black hole. Next, then the fourth part is singularity. As I just said, singularity is the centermost point of the black hole. And it is so interesting that because of being the centermost point, all the mass of the black hole or the star or the massive star and the object have gets inside it are concentrated on the single point on this singularity and because of this the singularity is zero volume and also having a mass this is why singularity is also said that infinite dense and how does it become infinite dense according to albert einstein's general relativity theory Density is equal to mass divided by volume. And when the mass of the singularity is divided by zero, yes, we will get infinity.
that's why the singularity is infinite dense and have such a powerful gravitational field when we stand on earth is does we feel the same gravity on our head and our feet you may say yes but no there is a minute and a minute difference in the gravity on our head and the gravity on our feet but in the case of a black hole it is not like that the difference from uh, between the gravity in our uh, head and the gravity in our feet will have a very big difference and because of this gravitational difference we will be stretched and ripped apart just like a noodles by the black hole this phenomenon is called spaghettification or noodles effect Uh, when you fall into the black hole in a vertical state you can feel this and if you haven't died because of this uh, spaghettification the things becomes more interesting now after uh, uh, after becoming this spaghettificated state if you look into back to the universe you can see the universe or the space in a fast motion because the gravity affects the space and the time and when the gravity becomes high the time becomes slow that's why when we enter and after spaghettification we can see the universe in a fast motion now we have discussed parts of a black hole and next we are moving to types of black holes coming to types of black holes there are mainly four types of black holes and black holes are categorized on the basis of their mass and the four categories are stellar mass black holes intermediate mass black holes supermassive black holes and miniature black holes first of all let's see stellar mass black holes stellar mass black holes are the black holes which have been formed from a massive star which shall have 10 to 100 solar mass or the mass of our sun the second is intermediate mass black holes intermediate mass black holes shall have 100 to 1 lakh solar mass the third is supermassive black holes supermassive black holes are the biggest black holes among the black holes that we have found in the universe and these black holes are only found on the center of galaxies and these uh, uh, black holes shall have the uh, one, more than 1 lakh solar mass the fourth is miniature black holes These black holes have been only proved by theoretically or we haven't found a miniature black hole. Miniature black holes are such smaller they are equal to only a atom and it is believed that these miniature black holes are formed on the starting of universe or on the big bang. Okay. So now we have discussed the types of black holes also. Do you know which is the black hole which is situated in our galaxy? Yes, it is Sagittarius A star. Or Sagittarius A star is the black hole which is situated on the center of our galaxy Milky Way. Yes, you may have seen this picture. This is the picture of a black hole named as M87 or Messier 87. This black hole is situated on the uh, center of a galaxy named as Messier 87 which is 54 million light years away from us. PON618 This is the black hole which have been found as the biggest in the universe. This is equal to 24 billion solar mass. Cygnus X1 Did you have heard this name? Yes. This is the name of a black hole which we have been found for the first and this black hole was found on 
Do you know what I asked on the first? Yes. Does that term black hole ever fooled you or confused you? Yeah. This term was found. That term black hole was coined by John Wheeler. Or John Wheeler is the person who coined the term black hole. Okay. Now I think that you all got a basic idea about black holes. Thank you and have a nice day.